This is the Wuhan Seafood Market. On January 1st, it was shut down. Many of the early cluster of confirmed cases had been in the market, so officials feared that COVID-19 was linked to trade in wild animals. It sold everything from snakes to birds, foxes, and rabbits. But the viruses most similar to the new coronavirus that causes COVID-19 are from bats that live in caves a thousand miles away. But just because they're similar doesn't mean they're the same. I, I just am baffled about this story. As of late April, experts don't have all the information they need to say where the virus started. If, they're, if the Chinese know evidence, of course, they're not telling us or anybody else. The absence of crucial evidence comes many theories. One is that it came from nature, which scientists say seems most likely. Another theory is that it was a bioweapon, which scientists say there's zero evidence for. I guess without putting too fine a point on it, it would fall in the realm of conspiracy theory. We're going to focus on one theory that both U.S. intelligence and lawmakers are examining, that the virus accidentally escaped from a lab. At least two labs in Wuhan research bat coronaviruses, the Wuhan Institute of Virology and the Wuhan branch of the Chinese Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. They have become the focal point of suspicion not only because of the work that they do, but because of their location. Both are close to the market. The Wuhan Institute of Virology is about eight miles away, and the Wuhan branch of the Chinese Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is just 300 yards. Safety concerns about both labs have come up in recent years. For instance, in this video, we see one of the scientists from the Wuhan Center for Disease Controls and Prevention doing research on coronaviruses in bats while not wearing protective gear. But regardless if researchers are in the field or in the lab, most bat coronaviruses scientists have identified aren't dangerous to humans. They're not considered um, major potential pathogens because they just don't grow very well in other species besides bats. That's why most labs who study bat coronaviruses do not require the highest level of safety protocols. The safety situation at the other lab is a bit different. The Wuhan Institute of Virology houses multiple labs, including one that has the highest level of biological safety protocols, Biosafety Level 4. It is designed to contain some of the world's most dangerous viruses. BO4 is the ones you will see in films with people in a suit and an air hose attached behind them. Uh, they're completely enclosed and protected. When China first brought this lab online, it was with the explicit goal of studying coronaviruses. China wanted to set up its own laboratory after the SARS outbreak to study you know, SARS-relevant pathogens so that they could do that on their own territory without having to rely on the international system. She's Zengali. She's one of the world's experts on bat coronaviruses and is based at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The work we do with, with the Wuhan Institute of Virology is to look for viruses in bats that we think could be the next pandemic. That work and the higher safety protocols have led to suspicion that she was working with more dangerous bat coronaviruses, ones that could infect humans. Recent reports have come out that there were concerns being raised by US scientists and diplomats about the level of safety training and general protocols there, and concerned that this was the kind of thing that could lead to leakage. Two years ago, American officials voiced a variety of concerns about these labs, including an ominous warning that there was a serious shortage of appropriately trained technicians and investigators. Without fail, every single BSL-4 lab in the US gets some type of safety violation, um, some type of you know, thing that they could do better. And that's the purpose of doing those inspections. It's to make sure that biosafety is um, as, as tight and secure as it can possibly be. But even in the most safe labs, things go wrong. That same 2018 State Department cable that described the possible safety issues also warned about the dangerous nature of Xi's research. They wrote, researchers also showed various SARS-like coronaviruses can interact with ACE2, the human receptor identified for SARS coronavirus. This find strongly suggests that SARS-like coronaviruses from bats can be transmitted to humans to cause SARS-like diseases. 
She's team reported this in a 2017 paper, but that paper doesn't show these coronavirus samples were effective at infecting humans. And the virus used in that research was not the virus that causes COVID-19. It's the underlying experiment that has raised flags. Researchers at one point had a live virus that could infect a human cell. Just weeks into the outbreak, researchers from Xi's lab found the virus had a 96% similarity with a bat coronavirus they had previously researched. So they both came from, you know, the same distant relative, same like great, great, great virus grandfather. And though these two viruses have diverged, that 4% change, it's the part that makes all of the difference to us. The part of the virus that binds to the receptor on human cells for the SARS coronavirus too, it's very different than the bat coronavirus, the part that allows the animal virus to infect humans. Otherwise, it's interesting, but it's not gonna cause any outbreaks in people. That means this virus and other currently known bat coronaviruses could have picked up the features from just the right intermediary animal, allowing it to be able to jump to humans. And really what we won't be able to find out unless we can identify whether there is an intermediate species, we have to actually see um, the ancestor of SARS coronavirus 2 to know exactly what type of adaptations it underwent in order to be able to infect humans, the smoking pangolin or the smoking whatever else. Of course, the potential great, 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 great virus grandfather isn't the only bat coronavirus in Xi's lab. Even she was initially concerned that her lab could have caused the outbreak. But since then, she says she's ruled out the possibility. She, her team, and the Chinese government have adamantly denied that it could have come from this lab. There's no way this virus came from us. China's been incredibly open. And I believe it's because it's a scientific collaboration. And in China, there's a really, uh, they're really proud of their science. They do good work, especially in virology. The evidence that a lab accident led to the release of the virus that causes COVID-19 is circumstantial, but speculation has heightened because of the actions of Chinese officials. First, before the Chinese government had even alerted the World Health Organization to the growing epidemic, scientists were told to destroy early samples of the virus, according to the Strait Times. After the Chinese government reported the virus to the WHO, officials quickly pointed to the seafood market as the source of the virus and shut it down. The Chinese government acknowledged it began in Wuhan and put out the story of the wet market. It was a kind of unusual, specific pinning on the part of the Chinese government, like not their general way of operating. But many of the first known COVID-19 cases were not traceable to the Hunan seafood market. The uh, initial patient um, did not have any link to the market. The Chinese government reported that they had found samples of the new coronavirus in the western end of the market that is known to house wildlife. But to confirm that, scientists would need specimens from the animals in the market. As of today, to the best of my knowledge, and I look for this every single day for 112 days, China has not divulged any information about what animals they tested in from the market when they closed it and of course, what, what results of any of those uh, tests were. The only way to find an answer to this mystery is with a sample that matches both the virus and matches the first patients, which scientists haven't been able to find. Even if there was a perfect match for the virus in one of these labs, without early patient samples, there's no way to be sure. The balance of scientific evidence strongly suggests the conclusion that the new coronavirus emerged from nature be it in the Wuhan market or somewhere else. Too many perfect coincidences would have had to take place for it to have escaped from a lab. But the Chinese government has not been willing or able to provide information that would clarify lingering questions about any possible role played by the Wuhan labs. It seems like such a remarkable coincidence that you have an outbreak of a coronavirus in theory from a bat in the same city where there is this high level BSL-4 laboratory where not only are there foreign concerns about its safety, but there are like Chinese articles about the safety protocols not being sufficient. And obviously there's no smoking gun. It's all circumstantial, but it's pretty remarkable. And it's the kind of thing where it raises questions. That is why intelligence agencies are still exploring the possibility, no matter how remote it may be, and even then, it's unclear when or if we will ever know 
the origin story of this new virus that is causing so much death and economic turmoil around the globe. If there are statements you've heard politicians say that don't quite make sense at rallies, state fairs, in that one friend's feed, let us know. Send us a note or a tweet with what they said and your question. We'll check it out. You can follow along by subscribing to the Post YouTube channel and watching more fact checker videos here.